Um, our personal data is deeply related to our identity. It describes us, it reveals insights into our lives and personalities, but it also shapes us. The systems and structures we build and use for gathering, storing, and interacting with our data define the way we think about ourselves. The models of ourselves that we create with this data determine the actions that we take. So I was curious about this idea of collecting data from our behaviors and the situations that we're in and using it to provide feedback and behavior modification that would enable us to fit in better in those situations. Um, so this is one of a series of three wearables that I made for myself. Um, another was an anti-daydreaming device that could tell if I was talking to someone and then vibrate at the back of my neck to make me pay attention. And the third was something that would detect how long it had been since I touched someone, and if it was too long, it would start to kind of fade out the audio. So in order to talk to anyone, I had to reach out and touch them. Um, and they were all designed around things I felt like I needed to do better to fit in. But it was also meant to ask the question, what is fitting in? What are these optimal behaviors that we're trying to achieve? You know, there's been a lot of research um, specifically, specifically looking at helping people with autism spectrum uh, disorders to fit in better with those around them. But in creating these technology, technologies, I think we need to keep asking, how do we set these goals? What is this acceptable normal that we're trying to achieve? So this, uh, that wearable series was about me reflecting on what I needed to do um, and having a machine help me get there. But I was interested in this possibility of um, letting others provide the feedback. And so this, what you're seeing is a table where uh, four people could sit around it, and then based on how much they were enjoying the conversation, they, each person had a little foot pedal that they could kind of move from minus to plus to give feedback. And then as they moved the pedal, it would um, aggregate all of the responses, and then the tabletop would um, dim or brighten accordingly to give the person that was talking some feedback of whether they're going in the right direction or not. <laughs> so we see these kinds of feedback systems everywhere in social media. <laughs> Via Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, etc. You can share your personal experiences, emotions, and opinions, and friends and strangers alike can like that thing that you said. They can favorite your experience. Um, they c and if they really approve of your utterances and other data that you share, they'll start following you, and they'll stop following you when they start to disapprove. But how does it feel to give this feedback when you're face-to-face -face and you can see the reaction? Does the feedback always encourage conformity, or could it be a tool to challenge us and challenge each other and push our relationships further into more interesting directions? So I've been really curious lately about this trend to track all of our personal data. There are apps to measure our sleep cycles, our brain waves, the calories we consume, the cigarettes we smoke, the steps we walk. You get the point. Um, and I was curious about using this biometric data to quantify and analyze our social relationships. So the project that I'm working on right now um, measures your galvanic skin response and heart rate and body temperature as you're hanging out with people. And then uh, over the span of time, it starts to associate your emotional and physical reactions with the people that you're around. So that just like those apps that show you which activities are burning calories, this one will show you which friends are stressing you out or making you excited. And then you, it could even um, suggest behaviors, you know, drop this friend, ignore their calls, or invite them to hang out. Um, 
so on one hand, this is a dystopian. Is, this is kind of a view of a dystopian future where fa we could be fast approaching, where we're totally unable to manage our social relationships without the help of a computer. But what if it turns out that this really does help, that we're able to form more meaningful and honest connections and spend time with those that really make us feel good and become more aware of the effects that we have on each other? And then there's the question that when you're collecting data about your interactions with other people, do you own that? Is it yours to share? So rather than just visualizing the feedback, what if we could receive prompts or alternatives? It's okay. You? Yeah, um, I think I've, I've been better. Um, you know, I know what we need here. Um, your eyes are so beautiful. Thanks. So you look really great in green. Suffer through another awkward date. Let the Conversa Cube fast track your love life. New travel version can go everywhere you need to be. I love I like you. I like you too. So again, this is part, you know, dystopian look at the future, but the thing that was interesting for me about this was that in practice, this device didn't give you such kind of cheesy prompts like that, but it would sort of look at the audio levels and then try to give you words that would sort of disrupt the conversation and give you an opportunity to take it in a different direction. And the response that I got was that people really felt this kind of freedom suddenly, just based on this hunk of plastic in the middle of their table with some electronics. Um, so this was about using a machine to uh, give you some prompts, but I was interested in bringing others into the process. So this was a piece that I did where for one month I let others on the internet control my life. So it was basically like a website that you go to and you could edit Wikipedia style. Um, so you just go in and type in any lines or stage directions or actions or things that you wanted me to do for, for the next day. Um, you could write yourself into the script, you could tell, give me actions to do, and then at the end of the day the script would close and I would perform exactly what was there. It was mostly like my daily life. Um, so this went on for a month, every day. And I think it was interesting the reactions that people had. A lot of people had fun with this. They could make me do whatever silly thing they wanted and see me do it. Um, but others felt sort of this obligation or guilt because they were my professors or my friends and they wanted to help, but they felt um, uneasy about the amount of control that they had. And then others felt kind of upset and angry that I was sharing so much and so publicly and then implicating them through their interactions. So, you know, there was, there was this experience for other people uh, give, contributing, but it was really an experience for me. And I was interested in this idea of kind of breaking down this narrow view of myself and pushing me outside the boundaries of what that normally is. Um, there was this kind of like freedom that I felt when, this, when I actually did this piece. Um, and I wanted others to feel it too. So if it wasn't clear, uh, 
you know, I feel like a lot of social media sometimes kind of shapes and narrows the ways that we interact. And so I was interested in this idea of creating a thin layer on top of normal social space that would let people that wanted to interact in ways that, that they wanted to. Um, you know, asking this question, can we create alternative social spaces invisible to normal society that allow us to have the freedom to act out our personal desires? And can we do this in physical space? And how do you appropriate existing systems for use in ways that feel empowering and free? So going back slightly to this idea of the Conversa Cube and the script, what if we could really crowdsource our social relationships and receive real-time instructions unbeknownst to those we're interacting with? rather than it being people I knew, these were all anonymous workers, and I wanted to see if these objective observers might have more insights than I did wrapped up in my own headspace. Um, and I was also curious about how does it feel for, for an Amazon Turk worker going to the website and expecting to do something almost like a robot and then being asked to do something really human? Um, you know, and is, is this the future of Google Glass? So I think, in conclusion, opening your private life uh, to the crowd, to machines, to the public, it can be really freeing. It can deepen your connections and expand your understanding of yourself. But I think it's also important to remember that sharing your personal life does not involve just you, it affects others. Um, your product of relationships and interactions with others and in giving up your own privacy, you're giving up someone else's privacy too. When you put something private out in public, you no longer have full control out of it. Others will encounter it and have to deal with it. And it, whether they've decided to or agreed to or not, and you're breaking down this line between yourself and others, which can be great, but it affects everybody involved, for better or worse. Thanks.